Today I'd like to discuss the next story by Graham Greene, The Destructors. And as the title shows, uh, it reflects the idea of destructions. The situation, the story, in its historical moment, we can see the importance of the story, which is written by Graham Greene. Uh, who was born into a large and influential family living in the south of England, lived on campus of boarding school where his father taught and then became headmaster, studied at Oxford and worked as a journalist, and travelled around the world writing freelance journalist essays while also collecting matter for novels, travelled to countries in time of war and revolution. Important point about Graham Greene is that two points, he is a topical and prolific writer. Topical because he's writing about up-to-date issues, hot issues, and prolific because he produced a lot. The destruction, destructors, is set in a decade after the end of the Second World War. Uh, I'd like to situate it in a period very important here. Uh, and English society was in a state of upheaval following the destruction uh, unleashed by the war. And... British cities were disfigured by booms, soldiers were killed, and also e economic so resources of the nation received a blow. So, landers, Londoners spent many fearful nights hiding in boom shelters uh, after because of the German booming campaign, and uh, so a harsh toll on the urban working class who could not evacuate to a large house in the countryside. Uh, so, it was a very social economic problem and the destructors here is set in this context it is uh, published in 1954 uh, decade after the first world war the second world war setting is london the 50s and the title has this pessimistic overtones destruction to destroy uh, it, uh, the climax is that in the text here, Mr. Thomas, the owner of the house, is returned to the house and he must convince the other boys to bring the destruction of the house to completion. Uh, uh, the destruction deals with a group of adolescents gathering and decided to destroy a house and the house was destroyed at the end. Point of view, it is the third point, the third uh, uh, objective, omniscient narrator, narrator. And the story introduces what we call the Wormsley common gang. Look at worm, worm here, uh, as a destructive element. A group of boys who live in a tough area of London and spend their summer holiday pulling pranks. So they gather daily in empty lots created when booms dropped on England during Second World War and destroyed the houses that used to stand there. And one beautiful house, old house, still stands on the edge of the lot, although it was damaged during the war and is brought up by wooden straw. So that's uh, the target of the boys. They want to destroy that house, though it resisted the impact of the war. And it is owned by Mr. Thomas, an elderly, solitary man, used to be a builder and decorator, and whom the boys derisively called Old Misery. So uh, look at here. We are uh, uh, introduced to this contrast between the old Mr. Thomas, builder, decorator, and the group of boys calling old misery and they decide and they enjoy in destroying this house. So the woman destroyed the house's plumbing, so Mr. Thomas uses an outdoor laboratory. Uh, leader, Blackie, concerns him with fairness, but Trevor, who is the joined, who joined the latest, who is the latest to come to the gang, is the one who becomes the leader. Problem of leadership. And the gang's newest member here comes from a more affluent background, but whose parents have fallen on hard times. So the problem of class is also important. Usually, the boys would make fun of the name Trevor, but he he has power and so uh, he inspires respect because and he was called T and I would like you to uh, see Mr. Thomas name is Thomas and here T this Thomas and T the contradiction and opposition here and uh, other members of the group include Mike Summers 
and Blackie. And Trevor here, who is the leader, the new leader, unhappy, rebellious, adolescent, uh, and he became the leader while he is the newest member. He comes from Walter, as I said, background. And he's m much more caught up in his own thought. He's in the way uh, he sets him apart from the other boys reflecting. So generous silence. And he has impressed the boys and guided them to plan this audacious plan to destroy the house. And he has this determination. And this determination here of destroying the house, it is a, a symbolically a desire to rebel against the older generation. Uh, materialism and belief in the superiority of the class to which Mr. Dobas belong. Okay. Uh, there is a quote there. There was every reason why T, the leader here, as he was afterwards referred to, should have been an object of mockery. There was his name and distributed the, the initial because uh, otherwise they had no excuse not to laugh at it. The fact that his father, a former architect, and President Clark had come down in the world and that his mother considered herself better than the neighbors. Uh, the, the irony again here is that father is an architect. Mr. Thomas is a builder decorator. The problem of generations here and the changes in the destiny of the dominant class in the Second World War here is going to be the target of the adolescent to destroy the uh, construction of the old generation. Blackie here, he, he was the reader before the coming of T, and T comes with a new vision of destroying the house, and he promises the way to bring the gang more prestige. Uh, that is, uh, it reflects on a more profound rebellion against ideas of class. So he brings new ideas of destroying what is there. And the gang met every morning, as we have here, and that's where the, the first the name of the gang, we have the idea to destroy, and we have the name of the gang, which is worm, to destroy from inside. And what they destroy stands, it is emblematic of either the values, the dominant values of a certain class, the dominance of a certain generation, it's like Mr. Thomas, the father, and Mr. Thomas is an old man, and he worked, as I said, as a decorator and builder before the Second World War. He uh, lives in a beautiful old house that survived the booming of the war, and is deeply, he's deeply proud of it. And he believes in the social fabric that existed before the war, in which order ruled according to strict social hierarchy of class and privilege. And he believes in this world view and never understand the hostility which other characters hold toward that old uh, world. The boys here call Mr. Thomas old misery and seems like a sad and lowly figure. Look at here, we have a group versus the individual who is miserable, alone. He starts to st stick to what is old. And old misery looks at the boy, uh, uh, boys over this garden wall and reminisces on his long gone boyhood, never realizing that the boys look upon him with derision. So a pathetic figure symbolizing a world that is too old and stuck in its ways to reinvent itself in the wake of destruction. That is to say, the symbolic representation of the story here, dealing with two kind of generation, Mr. Thomas standing for a dying, out-of-date uh, generation with old values, and the new generation uh, implied in the Wormsley guy. Uh, without forgetting the importance of a driver here at the end who keeps a lorry uh, near Mr. Thomas' house and he pulls down the old misery house after the boys tie uh, on one of the wooden struts dropping the house up to the back uh, of his lorry. Uh, and the driver here, when he participated uh, into uh, the destruction of the house, he at the end laughed. And his laughter suggests that the boys hostility the old pre-war world of strict social class and their affinity for destruction is shared more broadly by the community of people around them as well. So it's a problem of uh, class hatred and the, uh, the desire of this group of young generation to change the values of the dominant 
class of the past. I'm sorry, the driver said, making heroic efforts, but when he remembered the sudden check of his lorry, the crash of bricks falling, he became convulsed again. One moment the house had stood there with such dignity between the boom sides, like a man in a top hat, and then bang, crash, there wasn't anything left. Not anything, he said. I'm sorry, I can't help it, Mr. Thomas. There is nothing, person, but you got to admit it. It's funny. So this structure here, according to uh, the driver is something funny and it is a crush it is destruction nothing is left at the end uh, Mike another character he is proud uh, and eager to contribute like the others Summers outspoken and though he opposed but he become also involved so all the characters here just some of the names Mike Blacky Summers uh, uh, I am interested in symbolism as well here what's this, uh, the destruction stand for and what the house stand for uh, top hats in the story symbolize the absolute the obsolete values of the upper class in post in the second post second world war England and the mocking attitude of the formerly lower class towards those upper class values the, the top hat is outdated in the new world of post war England uh, uh, because the house stands like a hat and the lower class is newly empowered by the destruction of the old order a house like Mr. Thomas resembles a top hat pulled down and destroyed. The image of a house like a top hat standing for the value of a dominant uh, generation of the past but with the second world war with the new generation here it is to be destroyed. I quote here it was the word beautiful that worried him that built uh, that is Trevor the uh, new leader that belonged to a class word that you could still see parodied at the Wormsley Common Empire by a man wearing a top hat and a monocle with a ho-ho accent he was tempted to say my dear Trevor old chap and unleash his hellhound so you can see that he hates that is the new uh, leader he is describing the uh, house as beautiful and it is parodied by the uh, Wormsley gang. Uh, in, in the text here, Mr. Thomas is a decorator but lacks the skills of a plumber, uh, a profession uh, for a man of lower class because his lavatory doesn't work and he goes outside to use the external lavatory. So he clings to history and appreciates the way that it ties him to the past when the rules of class were still unchallenged. And uh, the, he tried to defend his house, but uh, it is too late. Uh, one of the themes that we find in the story, of course, it is destruction, as the story is set in London in the 50s, time of war, which ended, and the country slowly emerging from the destruction of the war. So there were drastic changes to social and political order as a result of the war, and before the massive upheaval of the Two world wars, England's social hierarchy was extremely rigid, and class was inherited, making unusual, uh, uh, making it unusual for those lower on the social ladder to move up. So there were, there was an enormous, uh, drastic impact of the war on the social organization and the social order and the political order, and there was a need for change, questioning the values of the classes in the before. In fact, uh, the gang determines the hierarchy among its members, but they have no respect for social norms. And you can see that the gang is driven by a desire to destroy uh, the common enemy, the values of the old generation, as you say, standing uh, uh, embodied in the house. And resentment was the idea of rep class superiority helps motivate the boys in their destruction. Uh, the uh, T's father, that is the leader, tells him that Mr. Thomas' house was designed by Christopher Wren, an architect who lived from 1632 until 1723, and built palaces for the royal family as well as the landmark uh, St. Paul's Cathedral. And you can see here that the design of the house is old as history, and it is a long history of a whole uh, uh, culture, a dominance of some values which the new 
uh, leader is meant to destroy. And Mr. Thomas House, a lyric of the pre-war era when class distinction were of huge importance and destruction of the house, symbolic strike against that old social order. And the lorry driver, a member of the lower class, cannot help out but laugh at the destruction, excitement, uh, and uh, this excitement at not only an adolescent emotion, but shared by adults as well. So sympathizing with a certain class and destroying the, what the house stands for. It is the long, the, the old, ancient uh, landmark which has to be sold in order to build something new. Uh, Mr. Thomas believes in a world of rigid hierarchy. He believes in a world of tradition, order, propriety. And he wants the boys to respectfully ask him before entering his property, saying, sometimes I like company, only it's got to be regular. One of you asks leave and they say yes. So you can see that Mr. Thomas uh, respect order, propriety and uh, good behavior. And the boy's code of behavior differs from Mr. Thomas. The boy values strength and courage. And their code is also hostile to tradition and interested in finding new ways to challenge the old and focus on success, power, and reputation. And their actions was based on how they impact on their own uh, individual status within the gang, that is, uh, the problem of leadership and power. And this is a new code of behavior based on struggle, force, and uh, war, because they are the product of war as well. So, a clash of codes, pre-war and post-war boys of the world. And uh, Mr. Thomas benevolently gave him some young lower class boys a treat, but they interpreted his gift of chocolate as a bribe. And, uh, he is absolute, obsolete and blind to reality. When Travers asked to see Mr. Thomas' house, the old man never suspected that the boy could be motivated by anything but a respectful curiosity. Wealthy want to investigate how he can manage to destroy the house from inside. So, as I said, clash between the pre-war and the post-war generations in the relationship to money and material position. Uh, also, I shouldn't uh, forget to say that they avoid stealing. The boys gather not for stealing, but they see it as beneath them to obsess over and covet material things. And this is because of their sense that material objects are corrupting and can be used by the powerful to control the less powerful. So, when Mr. Thomas offers them, as I said, chocolate, they enter as a gift, not as a gift, but as a bribe. Uh, he, he cares that in Mr. Thomas about possessions and like holding his money, he prizes uh, his house, more concerned with money and possessions, and he would, he would rather have a home that embodied his cluster than a comfortable and functional house. Tis father also, that is the leader, and Mr. Thomas worked to build houses, and by destroying the house, T rebels against his father, a generational conflict. And instead, the story ties the plan to destroy the house directly to uh, T's upbringing, described him as having been within him all his life, pondered through the seasons now in his 15 year, crystallized with the pain of poverty. You can guess here that the new uh, uh, boys are the product of war, and they see that their function is to destroy the house as an act of rebellion against the world of his family. The mood of the narration becomes distinctly philosophical, and from this conflict between generation, between past and present, destroying what the house stands for, the work that is the group with the seriousness of creators and destruction after all is a form of creation. That is to say, the destruction of Mr. How Mr. Thomas' house expands the lot in which the boys meet daily, creating a large garden space for public use in a space where a private residence stood before. The house was there, the worldly gang meet in order to destroy. The house at the end is completely rubber, and we have an open space 
it's like what you call an agora, which is an open for democratic explanation and democratic expression of oneself. There is no house which is their dominant guiding people, but rather there is what you call, as I said, agora, since there is no building. And destruction can be a force of creation in that it creates a blank slate upon which the new things with their parking loss uh, it can grow. And uh, this destruction becomes an act of creation. That's what uh, the story shows. Only for individuals and society, uh, that is, young people, move forward and build something new out of the rubble. Emptiness, there should be something new. Uh, and since I say this, uh, I have to refer to a group of writers in the post-war, and this is a post-war British intellectual protesting movement called Angry Young Man. It is uh, in these writings of this group in the 15s, uh, they showed kind of disillusionment within, with traditional British society, and they had this revolutionary spirit. When I read the story of the destruction, it reminds me of this group here of Angry Young Man, and it is a group of writers, playwrights, and novelists who questioned conventional ideas, beliefs. And I can refer you to John Osborne's Look Back in Anger, a play which was written in 1957, expressing this, uh, this protesting uh, voice of young generation, of the post-war generation. Uh, some of the techniques of the story, now first, destruction, it is omnipresent, it is the main idea, the main theme, from beginning until the end, from the title, from the name of the gang, Worms, Wormsby, Destructive Forms, and the meet, and with the new leader, with the, the new idea of destroying. Destroying, so, uh, the structure, dialogue, characters, lexical load, and imagery. Uh, the title, have a negative connotation, entails people, a group, and it intensifies the degree of destruction. And the group is named through their act, and it is related to the historical moment invaded by the destructive endeavors, First World War and Second War, and what we have is, is a, generator, a generation, uh, the outcome of destruction. So what I can say is that violence breeds violence, and the boom generation four, a post-war generation, is uh, coming with destructive force question skepticism, skeptical about the values of the old. Uh, omniscient chronological movements, uh, we have formation of the gun, discovery, new leader, plan, destruction. Building is transformed into rubble. We what we have at the end kind of doomsday, the end, end of week, intimacy, end of house, end of life. So, what we have at the end, it is a dark and apocalyptic vision, what I can say here, uh, uh, emptiness there, it needs something, a uh, construction. A constitution of group of destroyers, and destruction for them is an act of enjoyment, uh, or enjoyment, and uh, the ringleader here, Trevor, is driven by a strong desire of destruction. The aim is to destroy for the sake of destruction. There are what I call nihilistic motivations uh, in the absence of spiritual guide. And that during the 20th century after the war, we have some philosophical movements, existentialism, uh, nihilism, so new concepts, new kind of philosophies questioning the old values and the new ones coming from questioning the importance of what is to be uh, built. Skepticism, nihilism, absence of questioning, the, even the religious uh, standards. In the story we have dialogue, and this dialogue is based on power, violence, selfishness, destructive motivation, strong determination, a revolutionary spirit, need for change. This is when we see the dialogue between either the characters, or the, between the group, we can see a series of elements which need either about the need to uh, destroy and to rebel against the, the old system and the need for change. For characters, we have Trevor, T. Uh, it is our next version of T, Thomas, and son of architect. Someone who destroys against someone who has already built something. And T here is kind of arabist, powerful and cunning, dictator-like, driven by a man monomania, that is to destroy, megalomaniac, draws group to destroy, and nihilist, and the group disappears in the face of his selfish decisions. 
and I think he is a prototype for the new megalomaniac leaders of the uh, 20th century where the generation was born and they opened their eyes on this uh, idea of destruction because we have the predominance, uh, the overwhelming uh, importance of war within this uh, new, uh, this culture of uh, where the new generation was brought up. Uh, Thomas is an architect, positive connotations, old, alone, simple-minded, naive, helpful kind, father-like figure, but at the end he is at a loss. The loss of the house means the end of what Mr. Thomas stands for and the beginning of some. As I said at the end we have his house is turned into rubble, so there is this agora looking for building something new. When we read the story, since we are talking about the, 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 the structures, uh, the story is loaded with dictionary vocabulary of destruction. So we can meet a lot. It's just an example. We have fall, collapse, destroy, crash, blitz, blast, pull down, smash, and so on and so on. So we have the use of no, nothing, and any, anything, and the building turned into rubble. So destruction, nothing, no, the idea of nihilism. The imagery also, we have biblical, religious imagery, uh, connotative of destruction in the word worm, and we have reference to apple, we have floods, garden, so these are some of the religious images we have. Uh, positive, the garden is going to be turned into a place which is destroyed, and we have the worm which is destroying the apple from the inside, and we know that the characters are going to destroy the house from the inside. Also, 12, remember, we have the gang is composed of 12. It's probably a subversion of Christ's disciples. And if Christ's disciples are for uh, positive religious intentions, what we have here is that it's a new religion which is coming after with destructive intention. Ironically, the number is subverted. War imagery, imagery we have last room, last. And this nihilistic view is what you have, it is anarchy, a loss of direction, and quest for new values in time of post-war upheaval. A group of boys destroying a house which stand for the past, but at the end we have nothing. This is what I am questioning here. Also, contrast, we have a series of contrasts, past, present, a house, nothing, Thomas, Trevor, Builder, destroyer, architect, nearest, old, new. And through this contrast, we, we, uh, we see the shift from the pre-war into the post-war and the outcome of this uh, upheaval. City, it's urban, building, old, resist wars and dangers. It, has a it is beautiful, it has a beautiful garden, and the iron it has, it is to be destroyed. Uh, summer also, it is a moment of joy, no school, material happiness, and time here is measured through destruction. So the meet, uh, the, 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 the gang meet every day, and again, number three, the third day, destruction takes place. Number three, very important here, it is also subverted, so instead of trinity, it, number three becomes a destructive element. Themes, of course, we have destruction, overwhelming and the gang's aim it is to destroy so to plan to execute and this youth driven by a strong desire to uh, destroy uh, loss of moral values family is far and the young boys move from the family restrictions from the palace questioning the spiritual guidance and expression of the mood on the ideas of the 20th century, especially with the generation born in war and educated in war, and the outcome is change. Also, one of the themes is generation gap, which is striking in the story, youth versus old age, which is in every culture and society, but here it is because of the war and because of the outcome of war, youth refuses old conventional establishment, uh, the destruction of what the old built, but at the end what we have is that no alternative. We have, like as I said, this apocalyptic vision as if there is the end of the world because you have the loss of the, the if we try to destroy the old, the new generation will find it at a loss in quest for a new uh, start. 
as a conclusion, I can see that apart from this, we can uh, detect in the story, in the destruction, this absence of guide, especially the spiritual guide, in the elimination of the family, the father, the father and Mr. Thomas were builders, decorators, but we need a new kind of guidance. And this story shows that the post-war generation is in a moment of spiritual crisis because this nihilistic drives and this rubble, which is symbolic of the absence of guide and absence of guidance, it is very pessimistic. And they said this apocalyptic and gloomy world of the world, which is predominant after the second world, questioning the values on which the new generation is standing. And the house, which stood for ages here, is reduced to rubble. And what you have is this nothing. This nothing is what the post war generation is representing and what the destructors is trying to represent. So, as I said, uh, Graham Greene is a topical writer, and this is one of the examples where he is narrating the uh, tragedy of uh, a post-war generation trying to find a way after destroying the old establishment.